if you're watching this, chances are you've been planning a move. Maybe you've been planning to purchase a new home or you've had a second property for a while you haven't used much, so you're planning a sale. But through a variety of potential circumstances, such as an increase in demand for rentals, you might now be considering that it's time to start investing in real estate instead, specifically by converting your primary residence to a rental property. I actually have personally done this, so I have some experience and tips that I'm gonna share with you today. Welcome back Loopers, my name is Sydney and I'm a content creator here at Doorloop. Today we're going to be going through a step-by-step -step guide to converting your primary residence to a rental property. It comes with several great benefits, but there are also some important things that you need to know in making that shift. This could include things like the pros and cons, how to actually make the conversion, tax tips and laws that are important to keep in mind, and some frequently asked questions. We're going to cover each of these points today, but let's start with why you would want or not want to convert a primary residence into a rental property in the first place. So when you think of converting your primary residence to a rental, the first thing that comes to mind is likely cash flow. After all, whether you've already invested in rental properties before or not, that's an additional property bringing in additional cash each month. That's certainly the biggest pro of converting, but there's more to it than just that. In addition, there are also some cons that you should consider before making the leap. So let's talk about those now before we get into the how. Your first pro is tax deductions. If you've ever owned a business before, owning property is a lot like that. There are different types of rental properties, but we'll assume that you're talking about a single family property used as a primary residence. There is an assortment of deductions you can claim on your taxes to reduce your tax liability on the property, such as maintenance and repairs, property management fees, advertising, legal fees, and travel. Income for a rental property needs to be reported on IRS Form 1040E as well as any deductions you're taking. Just make sure you're crossing your T's as you don't want to be in any trouble when it comes to the IRS. If you're uncertain, consider working with a real estate attorney to make sure you're doing the right thing. If you're not accustomed to how this works, think of it in this way. If you make $50,000 in annual rental income, but you deduct $15,000 in expenses, your actual taxable rental income would be just $35,000. Our next pro is similar, and it is another tax benefit that you can take advantage of by converting a primary residence to a rental. It is the ability to claim depreciation expenses. How does this work? Let's break it down. So according to the IRS, you can claim depreciation on a property for up to 27.5 years. This means that every year you divide the value of the property, minus the value of the land as that doesn't count, by 27.5 to get the deductible amount. Let's look at an example. Your property is valued at $350,000. Keep in mind, this needs to be the value at the time of the conversion of the property. The value of the land is $50,000. A bit high, but makes doing the math a little bit easier for this example. That means that $300,000 of the property's value can be depreciated. You can then divide $300,000 by 27.5 to get your depreciable amount, which equals $10,909. And why is this great? If the income of your rental property for the year after after deductions was $35,000, you could then further deduct $10,909 in depreciation expense. That would then further reduce your tax burden down to roughly $24,000. Another pro is diversifying your cash flow and supplementing your income. We did touch on this earlier, but this is by far the first benefit that most people mention when they think of owning a rental property. And it's no surprise why. The ability to have one or more properties generating rental income each month, which just requires some regular upkeep and maintenance, is very attractive. Not only that, for most most rental income diversifies their income and investment portfolio as well, affording a healthier overall financial situation. And rental property investing has proven itself over the decades as reliable in virtually any market. So it's not just a solid source of additional income, but it's a sound one as well. Now into the cons. Our first con is managing a rental takes work. While hugely beneficial, something that can be overlooked is the fact that managing a rental takes time and effort. There's looking for tenants, setting up and doing showings, signing the lease, moving in your new tenants, regular inspections to maintain the condition of your property and any unexpected events such as repairs. Fortunately, many of these tasks can be semi-automated or at least made much easier by using property management software. Doorloop, for example, gives you access to features such as automated listings to make looking for tenants easier, e-leasing tools to make the leasing process a breeze, maintenance management tools to streamline work orders between you, your contractors, and tenants, and so much more. Managing a property still takes work, but with software, you can greatly minimize the work involved in managing your property. If you want to check out Doorloop, we are an all-in-one property management software that can help you. Click the link down in the description for a free demo. Another con is that you'll need to budget for property-related expenses. While highly profitable if done right, managing a property requires you to set aside property-related expenses. That can include insurance, maintenance and repairs, or legal fees. While the rent you bring in from the property should more than cover all these expenses, you can end up in a tricky spot if you don't prepare in advance for handling these fees. That's especially true in the case of maintenance, which is often unexpected. So now let's actually talk about 
about tips for converting your property into a rental. Assuming that you've already carefully weighed the pros and the cons and you're ready to start renting out your property, there are a few steps to converting that property to a rental. However, there's a lot of potential detail depending on your situation. So it may be best to speak with a real estate attorney to make sure you're taking any necessary steps beyond this to convert it properly. That being said, here is our list. First, check with your lender to see if you can use your mortgage for a rental property. This all depends on the mortgage you have and your lender. So you'll need to check with your lender to confirm either way. If your mortgage doesn't allow it, you'll need to look into options for investment property loans to refinance the property as a rental. Next up is to add landlord liability insurance. You'll need to obtain this insurance if you're converting the property to a rental. However, the good news is this is typically an easy step that simply requires a quick call to your property insurance provider. Next is to apply for licenses and permits. This one is unique to your situation, specifically your local state and city laws. Each area is different, some requiring you as a landlord to collect the rental tax or another similar policy. Make sure to check with your local chamber of commerce or state office to be absolutely sure you're following your local laws and not general information you read online. Next step is to prep the property. Now, it's easy to overlook this step, but we cannot forget to mention it. You'll want to start thinking about what an attractive rental property actually looks like and what you need to fix up around the property to get it into the condition it needs to be before renting. This means there could be minor fixes around the house or more significant changes. In either case, you'll want to focus on making the property full functioning, nothing broken, needs fixing, cleanly, and visually attractive. Beyond this, you'll need to calculate and decide on a fair market rent rate as well as set up a process for screening tenants and completing the lease leading into step five, which is get property management software. One of the last but most vital steps is getting software to help you manage your property. The reason it's so important is because of how many moving parts there are in property management. Property management involves no less than marketing, accounting, leasing, maintenance and repairs, communication, and legal related tasks. Now that is a lot, but it becomes much more manageable with a good property management tool on your side. For example, with Doorloop, you have marketing. Automatic listings make it easier to keep your properties and units filled the moment they become vacant, accounting, a full chart of accounts, automatic rent payments, a convenient portal where tenants can pay rent and more, QuickBooks online integration and more integrations, leasing with a complete suite of screening and e-leasing tools, maintenance, maintenance management tools that make the entire process simpler, communication with a tenant portal, streamlined communication tools, and more. And this is just a taste of what you can take advantage of. The result is a streamlined, simplified, and more stress-free property management experience from beginning to end. To see what Doorloop can do for you, schedule a free demo with the the link down in the description. Now let's finish by touching on a few frequently asked questions I either didn't answer already or are important enough to highlight in their own question. Question one is how long do you have to live in a house before you can rent it? It mostly depends on your lender. Typically, it's suggested you live in a property for 12 months before converting it. However, it's best to check with both your lender and in some cases, local laws to make sure you're following in accordance with everything. Question two, does your mortgage change if you rent? You may not have to change your mortgage if it already allows you to convert it to a rental property. Whether your mortgage mortgage allows this is entirely dependent upon your lender, so check with them to find out what your mortgage allows. If it's not allowed under the specifics of your mortgage, ask your lender about refinancing to an investment property loan or look elsewhere. And there you have it. That is all I have for today, and I wish you the best of luck. I hope that this video helped you out, and if it did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to check out this playlist on tips for landlords and property managers, and don't forget to subscribe. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!